Hey, what's up? Welcome to I Have Notes, the show where people with surprisingly full IMDb pages discuss all things animation, creative, and nerdcore rap. I'm your host, Issa Badiola, and joining me is my lovely co-host, Carrie Shawcross. Hi, everybody. And joining us this week are, well, first off, we have our regular special guest, Jordan Sweeters. <laughs> Hello, Jordan. Hello, I'm here again. <laughs> and then we have our actual super special brand new guest, Richie Branson. Hey, how y'all doing? Hey. hey, it's Richie. It's Richie. Richie. Good to see you. <laughs> it's good to see y'all too. It's, it's man, I'm excited. <laughs> it's, uh, so it's, it's been like way too long since we've all talked. So yeah, uh, even even if it's uh, over the internet, I'm glad it's happening. Absolutely. Yeah, it's like a family reunion. Oh, <laughs> internet style. Nerd, nerd style. Yeah. So we like to open the show with basically asking how everyone's week has been, and it's been a week. Which, which is yeah, yeah become a, a longer and longer answer question every time. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's been it's been a year. Jesus Christ! Like the weeks don't even yeah. feel like this week is going by. I mean, this month is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I forget the days, man. They blend together so so much. Like I, I have no structure in my life right now. So. Yeah, we're already like two weeks into June. Yeah, by yeah. The time this comes out, we have a uh, in the animation department. We have a meeting called the the monthly y'all hands. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it's it's it and it is genuinely every month. And this month it was like it was last uh, Thursday. Yeah. And and when Joe Clary, one of the co-heads, was like or uh, Clo uh was like you know it's been a month since we did the last one like three people in the chat were like wait it's no, actually been it a hasn't. month are you kidding yeah, me what? like somebody went and checked and was like has it actually been a month are you fucking kidding me yeah right now? it feels like two weeks um, oh my god i feel yeah. like my smile just like slowly drops the more i think about it yeah this re this year's been more like uh periods of time as opposed to actually yeah days. it's just like the the new thing that's like taking over everyone's lives you know every week yeah <laughs> yeah what's gonna happen next like what crazy ideological thing will we all fight over next week i mean be... is it gonna oh, be no. something a little less like substantial is it gonna be like can we lower the stakes <laughs> instead of raising them every time yeah. <laughs> I, I i actually do like looking back i missed the mask wars right like <laughs> yeah yeah right those simpler times so yeah. yeah. times I legit said that to my SO and I like looked at him and I was just like, man, I miss when all I had to worry about was coronavirus. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or just, that was just the primary worry in my head. Um, it was just like, oh, wow. I, man, although to, I am seeing more people without masks outside nowadays. And I'm like, oh, yeah. this sucks. I mean, Texas, man. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in the, I'm in a small town, man. Population 998. And uh, yeah, yeah, nobody, nobody's wearing masks out here. And you know, like, I guess in some way it's like, all right, well, we're so isolated. Like, is it really going to hit? But I mean, I've been taking all my precautions, like wearing mm. hand sanitizer, the whole nine, but it's like, you just see here, like not, it never felt like anything was shut down here. Like you yeah. can still go to the general store. <laughs> you still... You know, everything was open. There was nothing closed. The restaurant stayed open the entire time. Wow. Um, there was no anything. I mean, there were signs and stuff like six feet apart, but nobody was really, you know, uh, following that. kids still, you know, gathering, birthday parties still being thrown. And yeah, it, it felt like the country. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, I guess if it's a small town, then maybe it's okay. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I was still like, I'm still very pleasantly surprised that like around the corner from my uh, from my house is this like uh, it's like an ice house. It's not a gas station, but mm -hmm. it's 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 a corner store and it's it's pretty sketchy looking. Uh, <laughs> not going to lie. Um, that's but the I one that's like it. an old shack, right? Yeah, it's just it, it pretty much just looks like, you know, like when you go to home, the Home Depot parking lot and they have those like here's like ten thousand dollars or whatever you can buy a like a giant shed. It looks <laughs> yeah. like that. Um, oh wow but it, it's fine it's like people are they're, they're they're nice it's fine whatever but like when i saw that they had a sign that was like mask required to come right. in i was like okay 
oh god it's bad but also thank you for being responsible it's like right. the waffle house index where it's like you, <laughs> yeah. you know things are bad when the waffle house starts closing yeah, yeah. The waffle house is like the patron saint of bad hygiene and bad standards across the board so when they're like yo we have to follow this rule it's like okay so okay <laughs> All right. I've eaten at Waffle yeah. House, I think, one time, and I think I'm pretty good with that experience. And, uh, <laughs> That's it. That's it all was, you need. It, it tasted good. Yeah, it was fine. It's like I'm you like, can no see your reflection it. on the countertop, and it's like a yeah. coating of grease. It's not even oh, like it's not shiny. shiny. It's, just, yeah. it's just grease. Oh, <laughs> see, I, I lucked out, and the one time I went, it was after like a work trip where I'd been gone for like a week, and I was just like home and hungry. So it like all of that melted away for me i just been i come from an airport too anyways where that's already kind of like oh, yeah, yeah. you know not the cleanliest place ever so i was just like this waffle's fucking great Smash this waffle right now yeah yeah <laughs> like honestly like if, if i were to go into like a waffle house blindfolded like i think maybe like i think waffle house is one place where like your eyes make the food taste worse because you're looking around at just all the bite mm -hmm. You see the chef, he's wearing the same shirt he wore like five days in a row. And you could tell because like it's just grease stain on oh. top of grease stain. It's like, bro, y'all don't rotate shirts? Like, yeah. <laughs> what's going on? Well, no, they, yeah, they did, unfortunately. And that's they, like the third day. <laughs> <laughs> they rotate shirts amongst themselves. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, this is your yearly oh. shirt. You get one. Oh. <laughs> that's it. Oh. Jordan, you did you 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 erased, didn't you, this last week? Yeah, uh, I've been doing a uh, um, sim race series where it's it's interest it's an interesting format where the races are only 20, 20 drivers. So if more people are trying to like get into the race, you have to qualify. So they hmm. have like a day where you kind of set set a lap, and if you're in the top twenty. Uh, you get to make it to the race and this is the third week and I've been trying every week, but I got into this one and uh, I streamed it and it was a lot of fun. It was a little frustrating. It was a little nerve wracking, uh, but uh, I finished there. There are two races. I finished 18th in the first one because I fucked up a bunch nice. and then uh, finished 14th in the second one uh, That's after, dope. after some bad luck at the very end. But yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. I've been streaming it and stuff. So um been having fun doing that um what's your like wheel and pedal setup logitech uh yeah i got a logitech g27 on a wheel uh wheel stand so i have like the i don't the car doesn't use a shifter but i have like the h pattern shifter next to it um and uh i could try to like show it because it's like right next to me oh please do <laughs> all right so that's, Ooh, that's what it looks like and it can like fold away and stuff but it's like too much work and then the pedals are on the ground so i want to get into that for real like i like cars i love yeah. cars i like racing uh i drift amateurly <laughs> uh, <laughs> aka like in the to, parking lot <laughs> yeah aka setting up cones in the parking lot i used to have a 240 sx and then i got an rx7 so like i love every time i see you post about yeah, racing i'm like yo i like cars too like that's dope. you do you wrote a song about it <laughs> yeah I, I love cars i have a song called drift king that's like car core mm -hmm. like if i could go car back core. in time I would just make songs about cars. Like I would make a Toyota Supra well, song. Now you have right. hentai Lamborghini. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. crossover. All of my two. <laughs> favorite songs are like car related. Like I just, yeah. Cars are probably a bigger passion of mine than actual like anime and video games. But That's valid. Yeah. It's just an expensive passion to have. Man. I mean, yeah. like, it is. Yeah. yeah. Like e-racing is it's like sim racing is, is still kind of expensive, but you can do mm -hmm. it cheap and it's, mm -hmm. it's way cheaper than actually like racing in real life. So yeah. You don't have to worry about the fucking maintenance on the car. Yeah. <laughs> yep. oh, buying the car, buying the tires. I actually like yeah. inquired. There's like a very like low budget casual series that runs across America. It's called, uh, it used to be called chump car. But um, they changed the name to Champ Car after the actual Champ Car series, like oh uh, nice, went, went bankrupt. But um, I thought you were gonna say somebody just misheard the other person. <laughs> <laughs> they wrote the sign differently that time instead. Yeah. But uh, there's there's George a guy Austin's. who has a, has a team in Austin, and I was talking to him, and he was like, "Yeah, you know, we got a 
Got to change the brakes every race. We have uh, two sets of tires for every race that we have to buy new ones for. And so like, and I didn't even have like racing equipment. So I needed to buy like a suit and stuff and a helmet and gloves and uh, shoes. And he was like, yeah, that stuff, you know, you pay for yourself. And then we, we split the cost of entry fee, supplies, maintenance. And it was like, it's like $1,200 a race. And you're not even racing like that often. It's like, it's like every other month almost. So hey, was it with your bad. car? Uh, <clears throat> Twelve hundred a race. Was it with your car? No, he had his own. He had a, his own car. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. They have certain like specs and stuff that. Uh, it was like he had like an Audi, two thousand or something. A two thousand Audi. I don't know what it was, but usually people just run Miatas and stuff. Yeah, um, I was gonna say I, I I thought about building a spec Miata like yeah. many moons ago, and I just got a. I was like, I'm just gonna get an RX seven because I always wanted that car instead. All right, Richie, but, let's start our own race team. <laughs> yeah, I'm, hey, I'm with it, man. Like, yeah, I love it. You know, like that's that, I, that, would, that would be something. I like cars, but I like not enough to, to do what y'all are doing. So can I just be like the water boy on the side? <laughs> that's cool. I mean, Richie, well, eventually, who knows? We could we could be building the next yeah. F, the, the, one of the rare American F1 teams. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, Richie, I need. When we can all hang out again, I need you and my roommate to hang out. I think you've actually talked to him over Twitter, but he's got a, a BRZ. Oh, nice. Um, he loves he would, that car. Yeah, he does. Um, <laughs> I think y'all would get along. Super See, well. I'm, I'm back in the market. I, I sold my Maserati uh, a couple months ago. And like, I'm like, I don't know what I want now, but I bought a minivan for the kids. I went <laughs> from a Maserati to a minivan because nice. it was just Man. like, all right, I got You're getting kids. domesticated, Richie. But yeah, <laughs> get but now out. that I got that out the way, I'm like, all right, now I can start, you know. Just go get a, a Tesla Model X. You can have like a little bit of both. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Those, those Teslas are like ridiculously quick. Like they're mm -hmm. ridiculous. That, that new Roadster, I think it's oh, like 260 in like two seconds or something like that. Yeah, yeah that Roadster those. is ridiculous. You can get the SpaceX version that like has booster rockets, I think. <laughs> yeah, like, they're insane. But I think I just want a okay. Japanese, a, 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 like a 90s Japanese sports car again. I think I'm going to go oh, back that, to that. Like, that'd be cool. Probably old, like, like uh, the kind of the boxy. Uh, yeah, model. exactly. Yeah. I want that boxy stuff, man, a Japanese steel. So I'm thinking, I don't know, maybe like a 90, like the 95s are now legal to import. So I'm thinking like a 95 Skyline or something. Just... I, that, that's, that's exactly like the, the stuff I know all comes from Fast and the Furious movies. And, <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. This one uh, got to so be yeah. in the cars. Fast and Furious, man. Like, oh, dope. That's yeah, my saw that. family here. Man, yeah. Sorry, sorry uh -huh. we're talking about cars, Issa. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, Issa, this could Issa, be... what are you what are you repping? What's your whip? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um uh, I'm finally playing video games again. <laughs> Yay. Yay. So you know Blade Chronicles Remastered came out and um oh. someone turned me to uh Moonlighter, which is that indie game, which is basically it's an inventory indie game that is uh like both a shop simulator because during the day you are a shop keep and you sell the items that you get from when you moonlight at night as an adventure in the dungeon. Um, I love that so game. That's neat. It's totally up my alley because it's it's like time management strategy, but at the same time, it's like the bit of action on top of it's like, like adventure adjacent. Yeah. Where it's yes, like, oh, it's happening over there, but I'm cool here. <laughs> yes, exactly. And then yeah. you like build the town of like, oh yeah, this is this is everything I ever wanted I, on top of Xenoblade because I, I love it so. I love that game. I beat it. It was it was a lot of fun. Moonlighter or Xenoblade? Yeah. No, uh, Moonlighter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but really? <laughs> yes. Oh, that's so cool. I'm, yeah, no, I love that game. I'm trying not to go into it with guides because uh, I just want to see how much I can experience a game. But also, I'm like, I don't know if I'm doing this right. Like, I don't nah, know. <laughs> uh, not to like ask like too big of a question right off the, the gate, but hey, Richie, could you you've already mentioned like three different like hobbies and like you do a lot man I was gonna say and I was like, like, you <laughs> Kit, like would you would you mind kind of like talking to people about like you know what you do besides okay. being just like an awesome creative person or be oh, I guess man. as an awesome creative person I have like a very very strange resume of just random <laughs> shit right? so man I'll just tell the story man like what year was it? 2015, 20, 2015. That seems like so long ago, but it was five years ago. I was working for the government. I was like the guy that printed out your social security card, like thank, super, 
<laughs> yeah, just, yeah if, you, if you ever ordered a social security card like i was the guy but the problem with it is when you work at the social security office nobody just comes there just like excited right you go there oh when God. some shit's wrong <laughs> like, so it's like oh my check didn't come in let me go uh, mm -hmm. you know my claim got denied let me show up lost my social security card let me go so like that job was the worst job I ever had. It was a great job. Don't get me wrong. Like it was good. It was stable. Like God bless the stimulus, all that stuff that happened to open up jobs for the federal government. And somehow I got one. Um, so I'm thankful for the job, but it did. Sure. It taught me that like, I, I could not like, and it's crazy when I got hired, they're like, you're so smart. You're going to move up fast. And like, every time a promotion would come up, I would just not apply. Uh. Like, yeah, just I was just like, like no. Do I want to move on? Yeah. I'm yeah. like, I'm cool. I don't have stuck. I don't really have responsibilities, you know. I, I I don't want additional responsibilities at this job. So my boss would always be like, I mean, I hired you because I thought you'd like be this rock star, move up in, in the agency, but you're just kind of just chilling. And I was just like, Yeah, I don't I don't know, I'm more of a creative person. Yeah. Like having to follow there's no job that you have to follow rules more harder. <laughs> Than the, than government. the government yeah. yeah and it would break my heart having to tell people no like i could not be creative about solving people's problems yeah like well uh sorry but your wife she's got stage four cancer and her medicare is uh canceled because you missed the deadline by one day there's nothing i could do you know oh. like shit like that is depressing to have to be that person you know yeah. so right uh one day i just quit and it's crazy because like I was just being lazy at the job. Like I, my last year there, like I didn't do any work, right? And so one day my boss was looking. Somebody called and was like, "Hey, I applied for a social security card, and oh, it was like a year ago." No. And so they looked back and they're like, "Oh, I should have went to should have went to Marcus." So they go to my desk and open my file cabinet up, and it's just full of work that I never did. You know? Richie. Now any other job, right? Like you'd be gone. Like what? You just let work pile up so i came in i was late for work that day and i walked by my desk and i see my my boss looking through all this stuff and i'm like yes i'm about to get fired finally yeah. <laughs> so she sends me the message like hey i need to talk to you after you get off so i'm like oh they're gonna make me work before they fire me okay cool, oh my whatever. god i get back to her office and she's like got this big ass stack of like a year's worth of mail work that i never did she's like so what's up with this? Talk to me. And I'm like, well, you know, I just, I don't know. I just, I'm not in a zone here. I just feel like I'm more of a creative type of person and this job just doesn't really fit my thing. And she was like, well, I get it. You know, maybe we could try to transfer you to a different agency. Like, you know, there's the museum of, you know, the, the, the federal museum and they may have mm -hmm. a music position open for you to DJ their historic, historic radio or some shit, you know, and it's like, mm -hmm. Okay, but she's like, but in the meantime, like, you know, if that opportunity ever comes up, man, maybe you should apply for it. But for now, like, you gotta come on, you gotta stay here, man, and, and make this work. So what I'm gonna do is give you six months to catch up on all this stuff. And if you do, it will not go on your disciplinary record at all. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I was like, I'm never gonna leave this fucking job. Like, right. if I don't just quit, I'm never gonna leave because they'll never fire me. So I think three weeks later, I was just like, fuck it, I'm out put in my two weeks and I was going. Mm -hmm. So um, I left the job and I was just like, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I, I spent all whatever money I had in my, my little retirement savings. I blew through that. Uh, I ended up being broke. <laughs> it was bad. But while I was like going through that, I was learning how to edit videos and learning how to like, cause at that time I was getting sick. So um, mm -hmm. Around that time, like I was rapping, I was I was really trying to really pursue like this crazy rap career. And then I just started getting like I started noticing I was just losing a step um, with being able to record and, and being able to make music. And I think that was around Camp Camp season one. So that was like mm -hmm. right when uh, you guys um, had emailed me about doing that. And I was like, yeah, bet I'll do that. So. Uh, that's when I made Getaway. Getaway was like right on the precipice of like the sickness coming in, but I did Getaway and um, what was the other song? Uh, Rain Rain. <laughs> like, yeah. And those were fun. I was like, yeah, this is cool. I like this. That was like, yeah, it was a pleasure. I was living in Wichita Falls at the time. Rat and roach. And, well, no, no roaches, but rats. Definitely had rats in the apartment. Wow. It was just, it was like bad. Like it was like the Damn. craziest like experience. So like, 
you guys like really coming in. All right, let me say y'all. <laughs> I don't like to say you guys. <laughs> y'all coming in and, um, you know, providing me with that kind of lifeline, like really went a long way for me. So thank you. Like that email that you got, that y'all sent me um, was like at a, at a very much needed time. So like, uh, I'll always owe you guys gratitude. You all, y'all always owe y'all gratitude. I'm trying to stop saying you guys, okay? That's my next mission. So yeah. I'm gonna self correct a lot. Of it. I owe we, y'all. Yes, yeah, I, mean, I owe. We, I owe. We'd wanted to work with you for years. Yeah. So I think like when that when that came up, it was just like, oh, this like, yeah, w- w- like like you know, a, a big part I feel like of Camp Camp and Jordan, you can speak to this is like, let's have this like kid looking show that is definitely not a kid's show at all. And like, what goes better with that than like rap, you know, like <laughs> let's do something that people aren't going to expect coming from like this, like, you know, kid looking show. And I think like, it just works so well. Yeah. yeah it's, it's amazing. And so I, I recorded those songs and then after that I got sick, found out I had thyroid cancer, which was terrible. I mean, for, as a rapper, as like a human, that's not a bad cancer to get. That's a really cool cancer to have. Cause it's not, <laughs> it's not too crazy, but as a rapper, like them having to cut open your throat, that's not yeah, the type yeah, of cancer yeah. you want to have. So that's scary. And and you'd been, I mean, you'd been your rap career started in like twenty ten. Yeah. Wow. That's actually very accurate. <laughs> oh, Carrie's Car- <laughs> yeah. a big fan. He knows everything. About oh yeah. You. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I uh, so I mean, like you, you've been doing this for a really long time. Yeah. Damn, already. It's been ten and years. Then, God damn. Man. That's... Yeah. I'm going old so yeah so 2016 it's all starting to fall apart and I'm, I'm really contemplating like you know anytime somebody tells you you have cancer it's like you don't think about oh well this is just this and it'll be you're thinking of like am i going to be alive next year like so um after that um i think my car got repossessed next week i was like dirt like it was like oh, the man. worst time of my life like i was I remember pawning, I was trying to pawn my laptop to have copay for my, my biopsy because I didn't have any money. So I'm trying to pawn my laptop to get copay money. And the guy's like, well, I need to see your ID. And I'm like, damn, my ID's expired because I don't have money to pay this speeding ticket in San Antonio. Oh, so hey. I couldn't pawn my yeah. laptop. So I think I asked my mom for money. And I, I luckily, you know, she, she not luckily, like my mom loves me, but just in general, just ha- knowing that I had a lifeline in that way was beautiful. Mm-hmm. So I got the money, went to my biopsy, found out I had cancer. So then now it's like, well, you know, I can't really rap. I'm trying to stay relevant. I'm not really recording music like I used to. So I started learning how to edit videos and I'm making all these funny memes. I, I think the best meme I ever made was I did when Pokemon Go came out. And so I edited it to look like I was playing in the hood and like Squirtle <laughs> popped up and Squirtle, I made Squirtle have a gun. And like, basically it was like Pokemon Go player oh gets robbed God. by the Pokemon. So I put that out, I did like 10 million views and I was like, all right, this might be something. So I'm dead broke with 10 million views on the internet, trying to figure out my life, man. But uh, <laughs> eventually, like after I had the surgery, I went through like a couple of months of just like, learning more video editing and eventually Bleacher Report called me like out of nowhere. Like, yo, we want to give you this job. We're going to pay you six figures and move you to the Bay Area. You're going to edit videos for us full time. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. So I took that job and like six months after I got my car repossessed, I had a Lamborghini. I'm not a Lamborghini, Maserati. Like, (laughs) I wish I had a Lamborghini though, but it was like the craziest comeback story, man. Like, and then um that was around the time that y'all reached out for me to do music for the next season of camp camp and it was like oh <laughs> we were like yeah. we want you to do all of the music all yeah. of the songs. Yeah. And that made me feel like special <laughs> like y'all, i don't think y'all realized for me the past because i was working on an album at the time um i've been working on this album forever but 2015 i started working on what was going to be my first like full-length studio album as we call it, From the Underground of the Stars. And it was supposed to be about like me, right? Like the first album that's just me rapping about my life as opposed to rapping from the perspective of this anime character, or this, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. So it was really supposed to be like my, kind of my my debut as Richie Branson. This is me rapping, still the nerdy guy, but just like telling you about my life. Mm-hmm. But um, 
after I got sick, like it was, I had no confidence to rap. I had nothing. I, I don't know, like the, the, the soul that, that an artist has to be able to create and to be able to tell those kind of stories was just gone. And so honestly, y'all were like, sort of like life support for me, like all these years, every season of Camp Camp was life support because it was easier to rap from like kind of inspiration, have some sort of external inspiration right. to go off of. And, mm -hmm. and the show um, for me was that external inspiration. So while I was spending years just like stewing and trying to figure out like how to find my voice as, as an artist, y'all gave me the sort of like the 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 ability to stay in practice as a musician yeah um and it's so like there would be no richie branson without rooster teeth um oh man <laughs> yeah cool. it's, it's heavy but it, it's true if i'll you, be if, the one that cries this week yeah <laughs> yeah but if y'all would have never reached out and and given me something to create musically I would have just withered away into whatever something else. I don't know. I'd probably be working. Well, I'm, I mean, I'd probably still be um, editing videos, but I, I, I definitely know for a fact that I wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't be a musician now, uh, at least not as a rapper. But um, having such content to be able to, and and having deadlines and structure and like, let's record this. We need this many songs. Mm -hmm. Like that was. Um, Again, that was more necessary for me than y'all will ever know. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm going to try not to cry too. But <laughs> yeah, like I said, there, well, there wouldn't be um, Richie Branson without Rooster Teeth. I let me be the first to say that, like, you saying that you owe us, it's like, oh man, we feel like we owe you, Richie. Yeah. You have been such, oh, like, a, such a, <laughs> such a, um, oh, what's that word? A pillar of just like what Camp Camp is to us, what that show was. Um, uh, I, I think honestly, it's it's nice to hear you say that um, uh, Camp Camp and Rooster Teeth kind of gave you that structure that you needed. Because I I really remember thinking um, whenever the producer or Maggie or uh, Jordan like would email you, being like, "Hey, this new song is out," and I would always think to myself, like, "Oh man, Richie has it tough. He has to make a new song every week, and you knock it out of the park every time." And I'm like, "God, how does he do it?" it it's, yeah. I'm I'm happy we could help each other in that way, but also I feel I feel so indebted to you as someone who worked on Camp Camp. Like, ah, uh, man. I love yeah, you, Richie. I, <laughs> yeah, we, we would love, like, like I would always share the songs when they would come in, mm -hmm. like, on Slack and be like, okay, here's this week's song. Uh, it's a banger again. <laughs> uh, and, like, you know, people would, like, start, like, slagging, like, their favorite, like, lines from it and stuff. Oh, uh, word. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it's great. Um, and I, I think didn't it's... You, Jordan, didn't you total up how many there, there has oh, been? Oh, yeah. We were talking about that before uh, before we started recording. And I was like, I was one of the things I wanted to ask you is, like, how, how do you manage, you know, to make... And, and it's not just, like, writing it, which is, like, to me, seems like the most daunting thing in the world is writing a song lyrically. And then you got yeah. uh, the beats, you, you're producing it, you're mixing it, you're sending it off. Sometimes, like, you know, under a week and... Uh, so for for the three songs you did in season one and then all of the episodes afterward that's 49 songs you've made oh my for kids yeah. just under 50 does it wow does it, that's does it a lot of feel songs. like did it ever feel like you were like just doing another one? Oh god i hate <laughs> doing these well like, you know it's crazy like every time like the season rolls around and it's like all right richie like we're doing this season here's some episodes well in <laughs> advance <laughs> And it's like, I'm like, I know I should be like, all right, let me bust some of these down early and like, kind of, <laughs> it never works out like that. Right? So I was like, oh I get shit, that. this first episode is going to air this day. So they're going to need it a week before, the Monday before. All right. The week of, of the premiere, it's like, all right, here's episode one, the Monday before. And it just kind of starts that, 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 that conveyor belt at that point. But it's like, for me, a the pressure of that is essential right uh -huh. there is no creativity without a little so, bit of so you you thrive on like the the deadline exactly looming. i'm the aaron Rodgers. i need to, <laughs> i need to break a tackle and 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 have that offensive line like I, I, I yeah i have to like be that improvisation when it comes to this so it's like 
the pressure helps. So like, if, if nobody else knows, yeah, those songs get made like one week at a time, like, <laughs> and, and the That's deadlines cool. are very tight. So it's like, I'll start on a song. Like if the, if the episode is airing on Friday, I'm turning in the song on Monday. And usually <laughs> I'm starting the song the weekend. So usually like I'll sit down. Wow. And yeah, yeah. And like I said, I should be doing this and I probably, <laughs> I, I'm going to have, now I have more structure and, and I'm a little more responsible. I think <laughs> the next time there will be a healthy bank. And sometimes I'll bank them. Like if I know I'm going out of town, cause I travel a lot. Yeah. So if I'm going out of the country, like I'll bank like three. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you'll get like, oh, here's episode five, six and seven, yep. here you go. And it's because I'm gonna be gone. I remember, <laughs> so, I remember right. one time, I think it was when you were moving to uh, the Bay Area and you had just moved there and you didn't have anything set up and you were uh, like, oh yeah, uh, here it is. I had to record it and like mix it in my bathroom. <laughs> Yo, yeah, that was, I know the exact song. That was, um, damn, what was that song? I think it was Family Matters. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep, yep, it was Family, Family Matters and um, Bomb Bomb Voyage. Those oh. both got recorded, like, in, in a temporary condo in downtown San Francisco. And, like, Whoa. downtown San Francisco, there's so many sirens and shit going on. So, like, I'd have to, like, delete takes because there'd be, like, big-ass sirens blaring oh as I'm God. recording it. But yeah, I got that shit done. Yeah, like yeah, man. <laughs> that you're, was yeah that that sort of moving time was was an interesting time for for the camp. You're camp a trooper, soundtrack. man. <laughs> yeah, no, it's yeah, like it's... I'm one of those guys. Like you tell me to do something, I'm going to get it done. Sometimes I don't know how the hell I'm going to get it done, but it's going to get done, Devin. I, I think the thing that blew me away was just like how consistent you were yeah like like there was never it, any dip in quality or anything no. like it just always like, seems like, like oh man he must have crafted this for months like <laughs> because there's never a song that just feels like oh he just he just phoned this shit in <laughs> <laughs> well one thing one thing you kind of talked about is like you used camp camp to kind of keep you keep the creative juices going before you kind of dove into this album and mm -hmm. uh one thing i i noticed over time is like you kind of did start putting more of yourself into the into the music um oh like yeah you, yeah, you yeah, would yeah. kind of rap about you know what's going on in your life and like you know like how how you used to like struggle with you know things financially and now things are better and like you got a daughter um mm. like it, it did seem like you know a certain maturity like uh coming through like uh as you as you kept going and um I don't know. I thought I, th I just find that interesting uh, thinking about that after you said that. Yeah, that's that's actually a, a good um, observation. And I feel the same. Like, I feel like there's sort of like if you listen from season two all the way through like the most recent season, it's like there has been like growth as uh, and that's the beautiful thing. That's I, I, like sometimes I'll literally go back and listen to the soundtrack all the way through and I'll be like, damn, I was on one on this one. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, you know, it's like, you know, if you go back and listen to some of your older, watch some of your old material that you directed mm -hmm. or that you created, mm -hmm. and it's like, you can kind of like have, uh, once you've separated yourself from it for a long time and you come back, it almost feels like, because one thing I tell people as a creative, it's the burden of being creative. Mm -hmm. You never get to experience your own art for the first time. Yeah. So like, mm. when I listen to a song, I never get to feel it the same way like you guys feel y'all the way y'all feel it when you open up yep. the email and you hear it for the first time. You're like, oh, my God, this is fire. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't get to experience that. It's like, oh, yeah, I remember when I wrote that line. I was yep. taking the shit when I wrote that line. <laughs> That's the line that took me 50 takes. Oh, I could have spit yep. that a little better. So like, and I know it's the same way, like every time I watch a camp camp episode for the first time. Like I'm seeing the finished product, but when you watch it, it's like, oh, you know, this, this little animation here could have been a little tighter yep. that I remember that vocal, you know, that vocal line, you know, so mm -hmm. it's interesting to be able to like, once you've removed yourself from it, you kind of forget a little bit of what went into it. So when you hear it again, you're like, whoa, like I was on one. When I yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I will, I will always say like the, the part that I dread the most out of production is is when we sit down to watch like what is supposed to be like the final version that's going to go live because mm -hmm. at that point there's really nothing you can do like if there's a part that you weren't happy with or anything like that it's like you're just watching this to make sure that nothing is broken and just looking at all these things of like i learned from this i learned from this i wouldn't have done that i'll do this differently better you know like <laughs> it yeah it's hard to i i still have trouble i need to be better about this i, I have trouble going back and watching my older stuff 
just because like I I've definitely grown a lot over the years and I did not start out doing very great. Uh, <laughs> so it's but it's important. It's it's important to go back and, and figure out how far you've come and, I always, and, and maybe what you're still doing that you shouldn't be. I always mm -hmm. like viewing it as a time capsule because it, it shows yeah. what I was like kind of into and like where I was taking inspiration from. Um, and then there are other times where it's like, I remember working all night, like you seeing this or something, you know, and it's like, yeah, <laughs> you can kind of look back on it a little more fondly than when you were in the middle of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, yes. I definitely, I, I get that. Yeah. This is a, uh, since we're talking about it, I'm, I'm going to say the most talk show hosting I've ever said. Uh, I think we have, a uh, uh, the album art. Could we, uh, could we fill that up <laughs> <Yes>. please? <laughs> there yeah. we go. Yay. Shout so out you to said, Bo so Bonnie. Oh hell yeah! Put that together like eight years ago, eighty years ago. It seemed. Like. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you said okay. So it, it's five years in the making. You've released it. It's gone out to Kickstarter backers, right? Yeah. So it's gone out to the backers already, who are <laughs> patient as hell. Like yo, let me tell you, my backers are incredible. Um, because I understand. Like I, I did the Kickstarter. I was full of optimism. I was gung ho. Let's get it. And then my life fell apart. Um, and then it's like, it fell apart and, you know, it's like, what is that thing? Um, when you vertigo or whatever they call it, when you come up too fast, like when you're mm -hmm. diving, you have to come up gradually, right? You got to work your way back to the surface. And so for me being at my lowest point and like within a snap of a finger, like I had no, all the worries that I had, I think November of 2016, no, December of 2016, they were gone in January. Like, I'll never forget, like, I was dead broke. I got this job. They flew me to New York to fill out all the orientation and be introduced to the team. And they put me in this fancy hotel, like, right next to Central Park, right? They're like, yeah, yeah, we're going to put you there. You stay there and you just walk to work from from there. And my friend Kevin, shout out Kevin, um, he had picked me up from the airport, took me to the hotel. I get there and they're like, yeah, so we're going to need a credit card to, um, you know, just for incidentals. I didn't have a credit card. My credit was like a fucking oh three God. something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know. Whatever the lowest credit card score was, I had it. So I didn't have any credit. I had negative $200 on my bank account. So Fuck. I couldn't even, you know, do the debit card hold thing. So Kevin actually, he was like, here, just use my American Express and just, just don't spend anything like don't, don't <laughs> but just use it for incidentals. And so it was at that moment that I really realized like shit's really transforming for me. Like I'm in this situation now. I'm, that was like my transitionary point. And then two days later I got my first paycheck and it was more money than I'd ever made in my life. And I didn't, I didn't, it was the first time that I had a paycheck that I didn't know what to, I, I couldn't spend it all, you know, on bill. Like I spent all, I paid wow. all my bills and I still had money left over. That never happens, you know? So, <laughs> Um, that was my first time feeling like I was actually an adult of some sort, you know? And so, um, yeah, so to, to have gone up that fast, like it, it f kind of fucked my brain up, um, part of my French, but, um, it, it, that entire process like had me like depressed the entire time. I, hmm. and I, for years, I didn't know how to get over it in a way like the the thing i liked about the doing the cam camp soundtracks is those were sort of like antidepressants for me because <laughs> i tried to take antidepressants but the side effects were like mm -mm. Mm -hmm. I, I, I am not rocking with the side effects so sure. i stopped taking them and i just sort of tried to figure out how to dig myself out of it i don't recommend that at all like listen if somebody tells you to take whatever works for you it has to work for you but i knew that for me it just wasn't for me. So I went through years of figuring out how to sort of get myself to be future minded about things because depression, the one thing that it robs you of, it's, it robs you of the ability to look into the future. So when I was at peak depression, like I couldn't see past a week. Like I'd be like, you know, and that's probably why those saws got made one week at a time. Cause I couldn't plan that <laughs> shit out, <laughs> but, oh, but it's like, you know, I couldn't see, like, I wouldn't, I never thought about buying, you know, more property or planning a trip because it was just my life was in such a way my mind wasn't able to plan. So um, I spent years trying to figure out how to get out of that. And um, I think what did it was 
I guess like as my daughter got older and then she, her starting to vocalize like her desire to do things and saying I love you daddy like those things sort of like oh. kind of brought me to realize that I'm responsible like children are like blank slates that you have to impart your entire life experience on so that they can have it better than you and mm -hmm. once that sort of those stakes sort of got presented to me like okay I'm in charge of somebody's worldview what do I want my daughter to grow up and what do I want her outlook on life to be do I want it to be like mine? Hell no. So it forced me to kind of ah, figure it out, you know? And so I started traveling a lot. I was, I was going out of the country every month, like, and that was my antidepressant, right? Like I got mm. to a point where I couldn't sit still, I'd go around, just do all this stuff. So all the time this album is just sitting, right? Like it's not getting any sort of progress and everybody's like, what the hell's going on? And, um, it was mostly because I, I just had to figure out like who the fuck I was. Like I didn't know, and and it's kind of crazy. Like when I was writing the album, when I, when I first did the Kickstarter, like mm -hmm. it was about I didn't know what it was gonna be about. I, I didn't have any. I had never really lived life. I grew up in the suburbs. Uh, I went to college. I dropped out, moved back home, and got a government job. And it was like it was my life. You know, I, I never had anything crazy happened to me at that point. And it's funny because I kind of prayed about it. I was like, you know, like I'd like to have something more substantial to be able to talk about. <laughs> and yeah, be careful what you ask for. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit, oh, I God. got a story. <laughs> so, so God just decided to be like, oh, all yeah. right, well. <laughs> shit to talk about. He so, threw like, everything at you, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, I've traveled the world. I was in Hong Kong during the during the protests. Oh, and oh, damn. got to see that, like, firsthand. I think I got out of there, like, two weeks before, no, like, a couple of days before they shut down the airport. Oh, weren't you oh, Weren't was... you supposed to be on that uh, Ethiopian yes. airline yeah, that's flight? Yeah, I was supposed to be in Ethiopia for two. Whoa. I was going to go to Ethiopia. I'd already been once, and I was going back. And this time I was like, well, while I'm there, I'm going to go to Nairobi. Um, and check out because Nairobi is a big tech city in Africa. And I was like, I want to go there and see what their sort of game development, software development stuff look like and maybe forge some relationships with people down there. And the exact flight that was supposed to go from Addis Ababa to Nairobi was an Ethiopian Airlines flight. And I was going to be on that flight and it crashed. The reason oh that I didn't go, the only reason I didn't go, my business partner, Kevin, same guy who hooked me up with his American Express car, now we're in the tech business, right? So he was going to fly out there with me. And then I can't remember what happened. It was something with his family. I think his daughter, I think his daughter broke her leg. Something just completely to where he had to back out. He couldn't get a refund on his flight. Like he had to just cancel everything. And so I wasn't going to go by myself and... At that point, I was like, well, I'm not going to go either. You know, whatever. Just bite the bullet. Oh, my so God. I, I didn't go. I not heard that. Yeah. yeah. So, but if I had gone, I would have been on a flight. I would have been dead. <laughs> it was so, crazy. Real quick, It was, can I it was the, the Boeing uh, 737, 737 Max. Max. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Is, uh, is, is her leg okay now? Yeah, she's good. Yeah, she's good. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. I, I'm glad she broke her leg then. Yeah. <laughs> it led to yeah. that. So, yeah. If that's, that's as long twice. as she's okay now. That's yeah. twice that Kevin's really helped you out. So yeah. yeah. Yo, Kevin's my guy. So I tell him all the time, thank you for not being able to go die. And that was a morbid <laughs> situation, but we would be out of there. God, that's so, crazy. That's yeah. Crazy. I was traveling so much, but from traveling, um, I've gotten to see like the best and the worst of the world. I feel, mm -hmm. um, I've been to like the slums and, Columbia. I got robbed in Columbia for <laughs> trying to buy weed. Damn. Got nice. <laughs> Richie. Yo, I've been robbed. I've been in, in, a, in a trying to. Every time you try to buy drugs in for, just take it from Richie. Don't buy <laughs> drugs in foreign countries. That could be a camp camp episode. Don't buy drugs in foreign countries. Don't do it. The most scariest situations I've ever been in in life. Have involved me buying drugs in foreign countries. Oh my god, Richie! So yeah, Colombia. I got set up. Uh, oh, robbed man. me at knife point for three hundred dollars. Jeez. Uh, and the DR, I'm going to buy some weed, and it's like, you know, drug. When you buy weed in America, it's like you might got it. At worst, you have a guy that's like, "What's up, bro? You need some weed? Here you go." Yeah. And the DR, you're going to the hood 
like oh. in an abandoned building i swear to god i'm in an abandoned building uh like they let you in through like this makeshift gate you go in you see a junkie laid out on a mattress you've got a stray dog running around the guy's like reaching into his pocket to pull out some drugs and a fucking gun falls on the ground and he's like oh hold on hold this it's like oh, oh hey. <laughs> and the whole time I feel like, oh, fuck. like here that's like a lot of coke and up yeah like he like yeah. I I saw somebody buy weed at a jack in a box once like that. <laughs> it's a lot easier. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. So there it's like you're really in every the little wow. movies that make that shit look like yeah it's, yeah it that's, sounds that's, like a, it sounds like a movie. Yeah, that's, that's the Dominican cool. Republic, man. Beautiful place though, but my God, like buying drugs yeah. there, don't do it. <laughs> so you know i've been on that level you. and i've been on the other level of like being in japan and hong kong and china and all these places where you see just i went to dubai uh which is crazy just oh, so wow, much money yeah. there like yeah. but just to be able to travel around um and see different perspectives on life really sort of drug me out of like this feeling of like hopelessness so now you know, and it's crazy, like every year it seemed like I'd get a little bit of a spurt of, and usually it would be after camp camp season was over. I'd have like this residual creativity and I'd like drop three Richie Branson songs, right? Like if you look back, mm -hmm. you go back to like 2017, after that season, I dropped Otaku King Zero and I think I dropped a couple other songs, but it was like all those would happen after camp camp season. And it was just like that residual. So literally the entire album, if you listen to From the Underground to the Stars, um, the entire, like I'd say 75% of the album was created on post-Camp Camp creativity. Song. Oh my gosh, <laughs> wow. that's so funny. So, I was going to uh, ask, like, are there... Are, <laughs> yeah. So, so are, um, there, are there any songs that you like wrote you know, five years ago when you started this and they just kind of sat there for a while? Or oh, yeah. did you? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's crazy because, like, you could literally hear every stage of this journey I've been through from, you know, being sick, being depressed. I have a song called Paxil. Um, mm -hmm. Paxil was what I was prescribed as an antidepressant. And mm -hmm. so I got a song oh. that I wrote after I stopped taking it. And then I got a song that I wrote when I was diagnosed with cancer. I got the first song that I made when I got over it and felt like, oh, shit's good again. Then mm -hmm. I got a song that I wrote when I was like, no, my, my, cause even still now, like the nerve damage that I have from it, it, it is debilitating as an artist. Um, mm -hmm. if I do a concert. I can't really do longer than maybe 40 minutes, 30, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Once you get into 40 minutes, like wow. my throat hurts. So like, oh, man. um, even like talking, I can't talk a lot, uh, unless I like to talk, but like, I take painkillers just to be able to like do stuff like this. Like it's wow. kind of, you know, oh, it's damn. rough, but you know, I'm thankful to still be here, you know? Um, and that's, what's most important. So to me, it's, it's almost a testament to, you know, when you go through shit, you don't always make it out without like shit on you. You know, sometimes you still have residual shit on you, but you just have to <laughs> learn how to live with it. So I've been through a tunnel of shit and I just have to live with the smell, I guess. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's a horrible, that's a horrible figure. <laughs> no, I love it. That's great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just like, I, I, I can never, anytime like I talk to you or like I hear you talk on anything, like I can never get over everything you've been through and just also how positive you still are mm. oh, man, it just like yeah. boggles my mind like i i applaud you man like i and I, you know I, I know you're saying there's been some rough times too but like mm -hmm. you are just like this like positive force and i i just i fucking i yeah, love it, it i love you i just like i can't yeah sorry that had no point i just want to no, say no you're like, good and, and you know it's crazy <laughs> like the thing that taught me the value of life and the fragility of life is when Monty passed away, like that moment for me. And I, I, I mentioned him in a lot of songs yeah. and, and all that, because mm -hmm. he was the very first time person to reach out to me from rooster teeth. And it was yeah. wild. Cause when he reached out, I was like, what the hell is rooster teeth? Who are these people? And then I'm like, Oh, Oh, okay. So, ah, got it. You know? And you know, that was when Ruby was like first starting to be, a thing that was being created yeah. and y'all brought me up to the studio to get to see that like in animatic form i don't even know i could talk about the stuff that, that yeah. I, saw. I still remember you know? i think the the first meeting we had 
was we drove down to San Antonio. Yes, and we ate at Hoolahan's <laughs> yeah. right off of 1604. Yep, I remember. Yeah. And I was just like, we, we like, just like, we were in Austin. We we're just like, all right, just fuck it, whatever. Let's just go. And we just like took like a <laughs> three hour lunch to come, come meet you. Yeah, and that but meant I'm a lot so glad to we me. Did like, it. y'all just came and just sat down and ate with me and then just yeah. went back to Austin. I'm like, yo, those people are cool. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and That's then. A- that's what we said about you, though. <laughs> yeah, and then, you know, I got to come to the office back when mm-hmm. it was uh, that hanger thing. It looked like a hanger, but it wasn't a hanger. Yeah, but yeah, it was, yeah, uh, um, yeah the old warehouse thing. It yeah, six three six. Yeah, yeah. So I got to go there, see the stuff being created, and I just remember thinking, like, this is gonna be amazing. Like, oh my gosh, like, and now it it, it really hit home to me when I was in Japan. I was in Akihabara playing one of the UFO machines. And all the toys in the UFO machine were Ruby toys. Oh, shit. Whoa, and I remember so thinking, cool. like, yo, if Monty was alive to see this, oh, man, man. Like, and that really brought it home to me. Like, I've always struggled ever since I had cancer. I've always struggled with this mortality thing, right? Like, I've yeah. always, like, because I, I was diagnosed with a condition. This is the first time people are going to hear about it. I've never talked about it, but it's called mm-hmm. Lee Ferengi syndrome. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that shit right, but basically, all of my cells in my body have uh, there, there's every cell in your body has something that controls it or it stops it from creating tumors. So you have something that's like, all right, you're growing too fast. Stop. Right. I don't mm-hmm. have that. So oh, the shit. thyroid cancer was actually just a symptom of that, which what means the- that I have a very high chance of getting other things like that um, in my life. Oh, so. Um, I was super depressed about that because I realized that my mom probably had it because she had breast cancer and ovarian <sighs> cancer twice. Like you, it's rare that you have those happen like once yeah. with one person. So, um, and it's crazy because when they read me the results, they were like, oh, we have to have you see somebody special to read this shit to you because it's heavy. And I was like, oh God. So they told me that and I was like, well, damn, like so my entire life, I'm going to be looking over my shoulder for if something else happens so i it, it's forced me to have to think about like beyond like what is what is the point of life like if i live to be 80 that's dope but if i don't what can i do what am i doing just what am i doing you know what yeah. what are people going to remember me by what is my impact going to be on this world because we really don't know how much longer we had and it's almost like you know like i said looking back at, at with with the passing of money it's like and looking to what, what has grown since, it's like the man left the legacy that is 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 outstanding, you know. And it, um, I don't know, like that that inspires and that in and of itself, just him and what he did, um, that that inspires me to just try to do something like that. Um, I just, dang man, <laughs> I, yeah, it's heavy, but I, that I is. just, yeah, I, and I don't know if it'll be that big because Ruby, God, that's that's. I mean, yeah, you're 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 living you're living your life like you're living your truth, you know, like that's how that's that's all you can do like that. That's impactful enough as on its own, you know? Yeah, like, you know, you're you're going out like you're doing you're expressing yourself. You have you have your uh, your worldview and you're sticking to it. I mean, I respect that a whole lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, and that's that's like one thing I I. I try and I'm thankful, like, you know, looking at with everything that's happening now, um, one thing that I, I've looked back at, at my Rolodex of people that I've dealt with mm-hmm. and there's not one person that has sort of been on like, shut up about all this stuff going on in the world. Like everybody <laughs> is being courageous about speaking up and it's like, I, this is going to go into some heavy stuff. Uh, trigger do, warning. Do you don't want to talk about this yeah. stuff going no, on right now. Fast forward <laughs> through this segment. But, you know, it's, it's, I have stories, you know. Um, I mean, obviously, you can look at the camera and see I'm black, okay. But um, being a um, black person in nerdy spaces, um, it's interesting. It's a, it's an interesting thing. So, um in these times uh especially right now this has sort of been one of the first times that i felt emboldened to 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 speak my piece on it and not feel like the fear of like being 
um, any backlash, if you will, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I remember 2012, I was on tour with MC Chris. Um, I love MC Chris. That's my guy. Um, <laughs> but um, I was on tour with him and something happened at a show in Philadelphia. Um, I was rapping and all of a sudden MC Chris comes out during my set. He's like, I need Mike Taylor to come up to the front. If you're Mike Taylor, raise your hand. This guy steps up, raises his hand. He's like, go to the nearest security guard and tell him to get the fuck out. You got to get the fuck out of here. You know, you don't talk trash about my openers. And it was like, so when that happened, I thought he said something bad. I was like, what did this dude say? Because he said he was on Twitter talking trash. So I thought he said something bad, like vile, maybe racial. I don't know, but I knew it had to be something bad. So I go off stage and I read the tweet and it wasn't that bad. It was like, (laughs) hey, Artist opening up for MC Chris. You're not good enough to pander to me. Better luck next time. That's a douchey thing to say, but yeah, kick somebody out for it. Probably not, right? I'm a big boy. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I got, I was like, oh, damn, that's crazy. And the, and the whole night, I'm just like, oh, that's crazy. Well, dude was a Redditor. He goes on Reddit, writes this long post about what happened. Oh. And by the morning time, this shit is everywhere. It's on the front page of Kotaku. It's on, they're talking about it on MTV. Like, it was big. And when I say my inbox was flooded with, <laughs> I've never seen so many N words in my life. Oh, oh no. It was crazy. I was like, and it was, the sad thing was a lot of those people were like MC Chris, like a lot of, a lot of people were like, it was either one or two people. It was just people trolling. And it was people like, you no good N word, you messed up MC Chris's career, you know, F you. And it was like, Oh, these are the people that, uh, you know, this is the, it, so it was one of those situations where it, it struck a lot of fear in my heart about even ever wanting to, to even, I don't know. It, it, it and you know, everybody has a story like that, you know, where, you know, you, 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 you kind of can't mess up, you know, yeah. like if you're, yeah. if you're, if you're a content creator in this space, like you can't mess up. So I've always yeah. felt like I was walking on that kind of, ever since that moment, I felt like I was walking on a tightrope. You yeah, know, in don't, terms of don't like, like don't say anything that could mm-hmm. like you know upset anyone like the broad internet exactly. audience. Exactly. And yeah. it's like, you know, like you kind of almost put your experiences to the side in a way. Like yeah. I don't like one thing, like I, it was a while where I wasn't even cussing in songs. Like this camp camp mm. shit where I'm saying fucks <laughs> and damn. I wasn't even <laughs> cursing. That's how like I gotta be straight and narrow. Yeah. I don't want them to even, you know, to, I wasn't talking about myself. I wasn't talking about whips. I wasn't talking about shit because I felt so scared that people would be like, oh, who did this is, he's not nerdy enough because, you know, and I didn't want any of that. So um, there was the most corniest music I ever made <laughs> because I was so scared. But over time, I started to realize like, you know, I don't want to hide who I am. I don't want to ever be in a situation where I feel like I can't be my authentic self because of some backlash that's going to happen. Yeah. So yeah. at some yeah. point I just said, fuck it. I, I Anybody who was like, ah, yeah, I don't really fuck with like rap music, but I listen to you. I used to treat that as a compliment. I used to be like, oh, like you don't fuck with rap music, but you listen to me, great. But now I treat it as an opportunity to introduce them to rap music because mm-hmm. if you like my music, you like rap. You may not like yep. all like all what's on the radio, but you like rap. And that's what I want to drive. And there's home. other rap out there for these people. Yeah. yeah. And there's yeah. other rap that you can identify with. Um yeah. and, and that's sort of been my mission now is to let people know that hip hop, it's not what you hear on the radio. It's not a specific type of of, of content matter. Hip hop is just people who talk about their life experience in rhyme form. Yeah. And yeah. if you're being real to yourself, then you're making hip hop music. Um, but I say all that to say, damn, that was a tangent, but <laughs> you know, um, it's just, these are heavy times, man. Like, and yeah, no. it's, I'm, I'm going back. Like I said, I was thankful to see, like, I saw what y'all put up, um, and everybody has been so outspoken at Rooster Teeth about what's happened. And I know with every company, like I look at the NFL, they said some shit. And yeah. the NFL, though, I kind of mm. give them a little bit of a side eye, a big side yeah, eye. Like, it's like, yeah. like, yeah, you could have helped a little bit yeah, four but, years ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I know it, it, 
and, and I try to like look at these situations as it's it's an evolution thing, you know. Um, yeah. I look at myself and some of the the biases I've had, some of the things I've done, um, like what eight twenty two. I can't remember how long it's been since since, but there was a day when you could say you know the f slur towards gay people is just a casual thing, or even not even that, but you just if something bad happened, you'd be like that's so gay, you know. Like yeah. it used to be a thing to say, and over time it was like well that's not cool and so i've yeah. evolved my, my my lexicon to not describe things as gay when they're bad you know and right. so being able to understand what it's like to be in a position of privilege uh towards another marginalized group of people i know what it's like you know i can identify with people that are maybe didn't realize the viewpoint that they might have had might have came from a, a slight place of like I don't, you know, you call it privilege, you could call it like just unaware. Yeah. But just, just ignorance. Uh, uh, yeah, ignorance or whatever. So we've yeah, all like, had it. it, so was, it oh, go ahead. So I was just going to say so much of like what we're facing is just like people not knowing or like, wanting to accept that, yeah. you know, there is such a thing as like privilege or, you know, yeah. like they can, they can be ignorant about somebody else's experience. Exactly. Like it was a funny thing. And um, I had to check my own privilege like a couple days ago. Uh, I saw um, it was something. It was a cop. It was a cop that pushed some girl down. And this black woman cop got up and like demanded this cop like, go, go, get out of here. Get out of here. You're not helping the situation. So she really stood up for trying to keep this from boiling into a, a situation where violence was being incited. Right. And so somebody, a black woman on on the post was like, why aren't there any black male cops doing this? Why is it always a black woman who has to rise up and be strong in these situations? And me seeing that, well, what do you mean? And I started to like type in, well, there's been a lot of black male cops doing the same thing. So basically I was like, not all black men. And then I caught myself like, wait a second. She has experiences that she's been through Sure. That has led her to feel like as a black woman, she is bearing an un, an unfair burden in this fight. I don't know what her experiences are, but mm -hmm. for me to kind of like hit her with this, we got to be united as black people and we got to, you know, we can't be divided. That's not helping. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I'm doing exactly what I hate to see doing when I'm like, yo, exactly. like, I'm tired of getting pulled over 50 million times. Like I'm not an objectively worse driver than a white person. You know? like, <laughs> so like to have people look at me and say, well, now you're just being divisive. Like not all cops. And it's like, mm. that's the same thing I was doing to this woman. Yeah, and true. so that opened my eyes to the fact that a lot of people on on the in this that that are that are being outspoken about this on on are are they're coming they're they're speaking passionately speaking passionately and they mean well it's not a lot of people that i feel that are just like except from there's a few but um there's a lot <laughs> but yeah i feel like a lot of people are just genuinely coming from from a place of like trying to find a way to make the situation better like i was trying to convince this woman like no mm -hmm. there are some good men out there but there's a better way for me to do that and it doesn't yeah. involve me minimizing her voice it means me exactly. saying well i'm sorry you've been through some shit, and and i know that it's it's led you to have this world view and i don't want to take that away from you how can we fix it you yeah, know right. we have to be solutionists can't be we can't keep fighting over who's right and who's exactly. wrong. exactly all, all that does is it just starts an argument and then what and then you win it good good job like, exactly you know it yeah. didn't really accomplish anything and exactly i i saw you tweet a couple times over the last week about like uh being in the phase where you just want to fight everyone on the internet oh i mean <laughs> i've been going through that man and it's like and, whew. i mean just just before we started recording i kind of did that and i was like I didn't really feel better after doing it, you know? And then like the person, I didn't like convince this person of anything, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. It's yeah. The blood like, lust, I, didn't, man. I didn't take the chance to educate or like, you know, try to, uh, put myself in like what they, what they believe and why they believe it or, and mm -hmm. then how best to address that. So <laughs> it's the bloodlust, man. It's like, we, we yeah. argue people down and it's like, we get witty and we get snarky. It feels good until afterwards you're like, well, that it person does. is well, that... not going, that's, that's not a changed heart, you know? Exactly. Yeah, and then exactly. I feel like 
and this is, this goes beyond just this topic, but then you run the risk of like, well, that person's like never going to change now because you like, yeah, like I was mean to them. So now they're always just going to like jump to that feeling. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be that much harder to convince them now. But at the same time, yeah. like, it's like the people you, on that side, they just, they just do this. They just fight. And you know, it's, it's like, like, it's so who cares? It's like, no, we're just, we're frustrated. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, it's, it's, um, it, it's going to take a lot of just, empathy um uh it's gonna take time it's gonna take a lot yeah. of time uh i don't think it's uh, it's gonna take a different president um <laughs> i don't even yeah. want to it, it is regardless of what your politics are this is not going to get fixed it's, by this president yes yeah know? no i um, I, I, th I, th I think everyone everyone on both sides can agree on that yeah like, you know, president <laughs> in, Trump, in very different ways yeah they can yeah. Not give a shit about this so I mean, like th that's the thing too it's like we were talking about this earlier of like it's like first it was coronavirus and now mm -hmm. now it's these protests and and trying to like push this this black lives matter movement and it's like they're gonna it, they're on top of each other and they're gonna keep mm -hmm. going and when yeah. the next thing happens we can't forget to wear our masks and we can't forget to still advocate for what needs to happen yeah we're just going to be adding like another thing to like the mental weight of this yeah. nation but like it's what we the need to alien do right invasion now. is happening but also don't forget black lives matter yeah <laughs> and, but that, that's what it's going to take is like it, yeah it ha this has to stick around yeah, yeah. it's kind of like the best the, the one thing i just i i have to iterate reiterate because a lot of people mm -hmm. feel that when you say black lives matter it's like oh well what about every other life? Like, what's the, you know, why, why are you guys saying black lives matter? Are you saying mm -hmm. that other lives aren't as important? It's like, well, there's the, the implied meaning of that is black lives matter just as much as everybody else. Right. Like right. that's, yeah. that's it's, what it it's means. It's just that nobody's saying it. Yeah. So and it, it's it. too long to be a hashtag, like for marketing purposes, black <laughs> lives matter just as much as everyone else's. It's too long of a hashtag. So we can yeah. cut it down. It, it's not, this terrorist supremacist organization that wants black people to be on top of everybody else. No, it's just, yeah. I, and it's just, you know, it, it's just when one group it's like, and, and I don't even want to talk about it. Cause it's going to be something crazy, but it's basically like if, if, if trans people are getting beat up and they are there, mm -hmm. we, we have to advocate for that problem to be fixed. It doesn't. And I tell people this analogy because I've been through it. I I've had cancer. Right. Sure. But when breast cancer awareness rolls around and they put in the pink breast cancer is the most marketed cancer. It is the most donated to type of cancer research in the world. Yet it doesn't take away from the fact that there are other cancers that are that are even deadlier. Pancreatic cancer yeah. is super deadly. You get that you're out of there. And it hurts. But it's like it doesn't take away from that. It's just this. This is an awareness because breast cancer, it it's it's psychologically down because i've seen my mom go through this my mom survived sure. breast cancer and to know that they have to literally cut your breasts off and if you're a woman who identifies with her body that's a very that's a very traumatic experience to go through and so for that for reasons that they advocate and and people want research for that because it's it's like i said it's a traumatic thing for women to go through mm -hmm. and we need to support it men get it too so it's it's one of those things that you know we we do the research for it we want to get it fixed but it doesn't take away from other cancers ovarian cancer which is deadlier yeah doesn't take away from that it's just this is an awareness for this particular it, issue it's Wait. like that comic where there's like two houses and one's uh -huh. on fire and they're like we got to help this house and then the person who owns the house that isn't on fire is like what about my house yeah. all <laughs> houses matter you know yeah so it's just basic <laughs> It's just a basic request for just look at this problem. This is yeah. this is a problem. And honestly, if we fix this problem, it actually fixes. It's like, you know, what they say the tide rises, all boats rise, right? Yeah. Like, yep. it, I think part of it goes back to like, Richie, what you're saying about like, it, you know, just because we're advocating for one thing doesn't mean we're trying to take away from others. Like I keep I keep seeing people get frustrated at the idea of, you know, when we're saying like we need we need more black people, we need more people of color in the animation industry. We do. And yeah. it's not that it's not it's not going to take jobs away from white people. It's just that and it's not that we're going to give a black person a job just because they're black. Yeah. It's that we need to open up more opportunities for people. Mm -hmm. And it's still going to be the best person is going to get the job. But 
pe- some people are not getting the same opportunities as everybody else and that's yes. the problem to me yeah it's like yeah. the the issue is and and like as a black person in the games development world i now i work uh with harmonics music we're making games Ooh, uh, that's awesome yeah so we're making games for harmonics which is a beautiful i get i get to work with the guy who, who co-founded the company and made guitar hero we talk every day yeah. like so it's cool like it's working with people that like made games that i played in college is crazy and i'm a designer it's kind of like it's like everything you do combining like you know, your music and yeah. your video games like everything's combining into yeah one. so now it's like that's cool i, I am a full-time game designer right that's awesome dude the bl- i don't see a lot of people that look like me i just say that and it's not sure. like um I, I look for it's not like i'm like where are all the black people at that work for games but i know yeah. growing up and i know like from my perspective like that was something that wasn't even on my radar because i never knew anybody who did it i love video games and if i would have known like oh man my 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 boy's cousin he works at ea he does this then maybe i would have saw that as a path you know or i would have mm-hmm. known like oh or or maybe if you know there was a, a more stem um and more like mm-hmm. you know just just sort of tech focus in some of these schools um in neighborhoods where people like me grow up same thing so it's like it's an issue of, I think it's, it's a lot of things. It's, it's, it's complicated. It's not something that you could just pin on one cause and say, oh, it's because they don't want black people to work for games. No, it's just, you know, the way that the system, you know, if you look at the way America came up, I mean, there was a time when like, you know, when the country was started, it was like, obviously there was like this active, you know, these active institutions in place that promoted, you know, things like slavery or Jim Crow or whatever, but it's like the people don't realize like the attitude that these institutions that were created to enforce these things, they still exist today, even though the, you know, the, the active racist intent behind it isn't there. All of the structure that was in, that was created for it, it's still there. And, yeah. and now it's sort of running on autopilot, if you will. Like you said, it's not a lot of people that are maybe actively being racist. Like I'm sure, you know, most police officers aren't racist. Like they're not racist. Even the biased ones may not be racist, but the way that they are trained, the way that the, the, the system is built for them allows those biases yeah. to turn. You know it's what like I mean? It's like these intangible things that have like, yeah. that are so deeply ingrained that like, they don't even realize that they're probably like pulling over black people more often than white people. But exactly. It's what they're doing. And, and it's because like, for example, I, you know, both of my parents are cops. My dad was a cop. My mother is a cop. And so when people talk to me about these issues and they're like, well, or, or are you anti-cop? I'm like, no, like I want my mother to come home every day. You know, I would never want my mother to, end up dead or or put herself in a situation that's dangerous so when i when i see these situations happen i always like frame it as what would my mom do what would i want Mm -hmm. my mom to do you know Mm -hmm. what i want exactly and you look at like the death um the george floyd death would i want my mother to serve a community um and be on camera while the everybody is crowded around her and these are the people that she's there to protect and serve and they're begging her to get off of this man's neck. These are people that she has to, she has to protect and serve these people. These people have to trust her. And for, for I can't imagine her just looking at all of these people that she's sworn to serve and protect and smugly keeping her knee on this man's yeah, neck. Putting her hand like, in her pocket. How does yeah. that, that doesn't, that doesn't create yeah. any sort of, because in order to, 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 to protect people and to serve them, you have to have their trust doesn't exactly. mean that you have to bow down to them. It doesn't mean, but the problem is police. You here, have to listen to them. Exactly. And we've lost that service mentality. Um, exactly. Not just with police, but just in in any position of authority, we've lost that service any, mentality. Any public, yeah, public official, elected official. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, like it, and I think we also forget ourselves as like their constituents and like, you know, the, the funders as taxpayers we forget that they answer to us and we can hold them accountable and, and we don't even I, vote for them we, we just vote for president yeah. we don't even look at what's down exactly the ballot. 
Yeah. So uh, I don't how... know who the Twelfth Circuit judge is, but uh, this guy, you know, that's the motherfucker like... putting people in jail. You know, yeah. this this police chief or this sheriff, that's the person that's saying, hey, you know, this is what we do. So it's like we don't. And, and, it, and it's crazy, like, when you look at, like, a lot of the places where these police are the worst, if be democratic places, right? Like, it is, it's because people are, are thinking of the top level, but we're not, we're not really paying attention yeah. to what's going on in the middle level. Like, I, I politically am like, I'm, I'm a neither crat, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I have certain, like, beliefs that are more liberal, and I have certain beliefs that are more conservative, but I think the problem with America, the damn, this is getting deep. I'm sorry, guys. I think the problem is, no matter what you are, like, look, my neighbor is a Trump supporter here, big-ass Trump flag, but, like, when we talk to each other, like, that never comes up. Cool people, right? right? Like, but I know, like, politically, like, we think totally different, but in we've lost the ability to just, like, focus on what brings us together, right? Yeah. Like, and, 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 and the problem is our country's politics, they, 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 they enforce that. Look at how... They feed off of it. Yeah, like, politicians now, no matter what side of it, it's like, our country's so divided because of those people on that side <laughs> are being stupid. It's like, well, that helps. That's not helping. So it's like... <laughs> we've sort of entrenched ourselves and you look at like more advanced democracies, right? They have like 80 parties. And it's like, you have to form these coalitions to get shit done. Yeah. And that's, what's missing from America is like, we got two parties and it's like such an easy, clean, neat division to have. Like let's divide these people up into two parties and have them fight all the time while we don't do shit. Yeah. Think about how many people vote because it's like, I'm going to vote because of this one issue this one issue let's say it's guns i'm gonna vote because i don't want the democrats to take my guns away barack so, yeah. obama so was in office for, for yeah eight years guns never yeah. got taken away yeah. i'm gonna vote democrat because i don't want abortion rights to get to get destroyed right trump's been in office for three roe versus wade is still standing it's like they know this they know that all they have to do is generate fear i'm gonna it's vote because the, yeah, i don't want this rhetoric. to happen and then when 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 we get complete super majority the needle moves boop. the needle's always moving just a little bit left mm -hmm. a little bit right but there's never this revolutionary i'm gonna get everything done that i say i'm gonna get done that wall is not built it's it's not yeah i we i'm i'm hoping i'm hoping this is the beginning of something much bigger because i think you know when it comes to this and when it comes to just i think politics in general like we need we need a big change yeah we it's really stupid do. it is dumb like i'm tired of it man i look at In incremental changes yeah yeah, yeah. i'm just i'm exhausted because it's like I, I want to be able to say, I want to be able to be the type of person that's like, look, I think that, look, gay people should be allowed to get married and do what they, they need to do. It's love. Love is love. Love has no, you know, as long as it's legal in, in a sense of like, there's no exploitation being done. You're not loving kids, like stuff like that. Like if it's two consenting adults, they can love each other however they want. Right. But I also believe like, I don't like, getting the shit taxed out of me to pay for earthworm <laughs> studies so why can't like i'm not right you know i don't want to be put in a box of like people well, yeah people are complex exactly like yeah. everyone's different so yeah i don't like high taxes so i'm a republican no but i don't like you know people being you know biased against you know this marginalized people so am i yeah. a democrat or am i just somebody who is socially liberal, fiscally conservative. Yeah. You know? But we're not there yet. As a society, mm -hmm. we, we have, we've gotten down to this simplistic political thing and it's just fucked everything up. That's why masks, we argue over wearing masks. Yeah, and mask is now a political thing. If yeah. you don't wear a mask, you're, are you just being like, you Trump I, supporter? I, like, what? There was, <laughs> there was this deal? like really brief period of time where like obviously like, you know, wish COVID never happened, all that kind of stuff. But there's this brief period of time where I was like, you know what, if nothing else, I don't think I've ever seen this more united before. Like, <laughs> holy shit, people are actually coming together and yeah. like working on stuff together. It, it, I mean, it, a lot of people have said this, but it, it, it reminded me of like 9-11. 
Yeah. It was like the first time where like pol- politics and that shit didn't matter. And it was, let's all just like work together. And then it was that, that lasted for about two weeks. Yeah. It was a great two weeks. Bruh. Uh, oh man. Bruh. When they started saying like, Oh yeah, we're in mass. And it, it, people were like, the, the science behind some of these people were like, no, if you wear a mask, you'll get sick from CO2. Re- oh, what my God. F- Our surgeons wear masks every day, all day, and they're fine. <laughs> but it's just like the mental gymnastics that people go through to support their worldview just to be yep. on the opposite side. Yeah, we can't just to come justify together. it. Yeah, we can't come together, man. This police brutality thing, same thing. Like you got. Yeah. When the, when the old white guy got pushed down by the cop and, you know, busted his head on the concrete, that should have been like, yo. And two, all the All Lives Matter people will always say, like, y'all don't ever talk about the... There it is, plain as day. We are mm-hmm. we are expressing outrage <laughs> at this white yeah, man exactly. who was brutalized by the cops. And then it's like, well, no, he shouldn't have been in their faces Ex- like that. Exactly. Like, yeah. There's always... That's what I, w- I was going to say. Like, even if, like the looting and uh, the rioting wasn't happening, there's going to be something that yep. the other side who yeah. wants to support was, the status quo could point to. And yeah, it, it would just dealing. it would just continue. Like the argument there, would continue. There was no looting happening when Colin Kaepernick was kneeling. I'm just saying. <laughs> exactly. There's not a single exactly. building looted, but oh he God. was enemy number one. And I tell people all the time, Martin Luther King, they bring up Martin Luther King and say, oh, all he's a great 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 example protester this dude was it's crazy i had i had the privilege of working with his son martin luther king the third um wow and yeah it's crazy that's that's another thing on the resume that is wow (laughs) i set up up his twitter account as well i set up his twitter account (laughs) damn but um no like to see people like there there were people literally trying to tell this man what his father really stood for oh this is the person God. who like grew up with this man right like your father had this quote he wouldn't support what's going oh, on right now my God. that's his damn daddy come on man like yeah but that's what oh, we're he, at with and it. he was also vilified though like yeah yeah he was hated oh. he was shot in the face he was yeah. Yeah. Oh. and there were but, riots yeah, that didn't happen because days. he was a good protester yeah there were seven days of riots after that and nobody is like well those people back then riot no, seven days of riots and then the Civil Rights Act passed. Yep. So it's like you look at history and you look at all of the things that people say, well, Martin Luther King was great. No, he was hated. Colin Kaepernick hated. And it's not going to be maybe maybe 20 years later, people are going to look at Colin Kaepernick and be like, he was a great nonviolent protester. Yeah, yep. But yeah. when why when, couldn't it be like him? Yeah, yeah. But when they were sitting in on people's restaurants, like the black people would come in and sit in and do the protests on white yep. own restaurants. They were like, why are they disrespecting? This is the one chance I have with my family to sit down and have peace. And these black people are ruining it with their protests. Fast forward yeah. 20 years, 30 years later, this is my one moment to have time with my family in peace. And this man is kneeling while I'm watching a football game. Oh. Like how sit, we've got that. It's almost like worse. Like you don't even have to see this man in your living room. It's not yeah. like he's yeah. in your living yeah. room yeah. while you're trying close to close your eyes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's on a TV. He's on TV. <laughs> but it's just crazy to me. Like, like I said, America is is a funny place. I love yeah. this country. And the, the the when I say I love this country, and, and if you love America, you got it's like if you love your body, right? You love your body. Do y'all do you love taking care of yourself? Oh yeah. Mm. So if you stink, you're gonna be like, you know what? I'm gonna take a fucking shower <laughs> yeah. so that I can like wash my body because I care about my body. Yep. That's America. America, we're a little musty right now. We need to take a shower. <laughs> take a shower. I don't want us to be musty. I'd like us to take a shower so we can clean our shit and keep it moving, man. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like that that stench is just like ingrained though, and like yeah, no amount of scrubbing is oh gonna gosh. come off and. So those are the yeah. those are those are the hardest times for me where I just feel like there there there's no reason for optimism. But you yeah. just, you 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 give me hope. Like you're yeah, you're man, a really gotta, optimistic guy, and I appreciate. We just gotta that. we just gotta shower, man. Like like I said, I love <laughs> everybody, man. I love people flawed. Like I said, I, I'm in Trump country right now. All of my neighbors are Trump people, and it's cool. Like I don't have any beef with them. Like like I said, we don't agree on politics, but you know what? Like. This is where I got to live. 
You know, this is yeah, where I am yeah. right now. And it's like, I got to make the best of it. So yeah. for me, it's about, we got to build bridges with each other. This is going to be some hard work. It's going to be like, sometimes when we got to be like, especially with this shit that's going on right now, we have to have a frank discussion. Yeah. And we have to be like, and that's why I'm, I've been so forceful on Twitter about it. Like I've yeah. been like passionate about this shit. Like we cannot just turn a blind eye like fuck the semantics like let's yeah. get past the whatever arguments you want to have that, that are semantics or about respect which is a it's a psychological construct i don't care <laughs> about your respect respectful if, is if, a point of view and an opinion like exactly yeah. you know what i'm saying like there's nothing that's going to be respectful to anybody yeah. to everybody you know what I'm why saying? don't so we just like, talk about the issue instead of how respectful it is yeah. exactly you know what i'm saying there, there's a time way down the line where we can kind of reset that and they'd be like okay yeah. cool now yeah. sure whatever but it's like that's not right now right so, now is we need to be just honest like pride and respect like those you know pride cometh before the fall and it's a lot of people that are trying to hold on to that pride man mm -hmm. we gotta have pride and boy no we have you to talk about to assess. you talk about having family who are cops i also have some family who work in policing and it mm -hmm. has been really hard to like Woo. balance both those relationships and what I want to see change. Yeah. And you know, my mother, same thing, like, and, and, but see, my mother is, is, and I, I hate saying it like that, but she's a good, a good cop, you know, yeah, in, in a sense sure. that she's actually at, she's actually doing something to make things better besides yeah. just going with the flow. But there are a lot of cops regardless, like, and, and, and one thing I will make very clear is like, when we say like, police when we're talking about police as an institution it's not white police it's all yeah police. it's yeah. not it doesn't yeah. matter and it, it's not an individual police officer yeah. either i've like, been like the, i've had it's... i've had some run-ins with black cops like yeah. we're the same color but it's like the training and the instant they you get in it's a gang like let's just be real being a police officer you are joining a gang Think about all those cops that have like 80 infractions and they're still in the streets yep. because the union is like, nah, he yep. gotta get his job back. There was a story about a cop who who literally kicked somebody in the back, of, kicked somebody in the face while they were handcuffed, laying on the ground, broke three of their teeth. If I did that at my job, I'd be in jail right now. Yeah, this cop got this dude got his job back. Yeah, how? You know what I'm saying? Like it, it just in any position where you have people's lives in your hands. You need to be held the most accountable, yeah, not as the longest you. leash. Yeah, if you if you bust somebody's teeth in like that, and they, you know, or, or or it permanently injures somebody or kills somebody, like that needs to be addressed with the utmost scrutiny. Yep. It's not and got, urgency. Yeah, I yes. got fired from urgency. my first job. My first job, I was working at HEB as a cashier. I got fired because I let somebody leave. They had a couple of like packs of ground beef under their basket and I, I didn't see it I how it dare out. you Richie yeah, yeah damn it, I got fired for that shit with no recourse <laughs> I couldn't get my job back for that shit nope. but it's people that have bodies on their record they have blood yeah. on their hands and they're still in those streets I watched I watched the documentary on Netflix uh the 13th oh you watched uh, that yeah I watched that it's last heavy. night and that was made in early 2016 I think it came mm -hmm. out everything about it like is just a echo of what's going on right now mm -hmm. and yeah that's probably what's watching. been going on for a hundred years too so you realize that, like it starts the, the you realize like the police is just like the intro that's like the intro yeah 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 it's exactly so much more so much more that needs to be it's, reformed it's the tip of the iceberg so yeah yeah it's all it all goes deep all the way back down to the founding of the country so if you're still watching this and you haven't like <laughs> turned this shit off uh, because of this uncomfortable conversation, we, we yeah. appreciate it. Made yeah, it. I was gonna say oh, yeah. I hate I hate to say it, but we got to wrap up here. Yeah, um, I have. I do Rich, want to say, Richie, we've we've got to have you back on. Yeah. Oh yeah. I You've been amazing. I'm um, I'm really happy we're able to give you this platform for you to talk about like not just your life and your music but also your viewpoints mm -hmm. and it's really clear that you've you've thought about it and mm -hmm. you speak so passionately about it because this is something you really believe in and that's something that's like it, that's so important and that's something that we really want to support like you've been awesome richie absolutely yeah. but most importantly like thank y'all like y'all are an amazing company um i sing you guys' praises all the time i tell people look 
with the way these companies are coming out and the things that they're doing, like I'd rather work in y'all's mail room than in the executive board <laughs> and some of these other places. So if y'all are ever hiring for a mail boy, look out. <laughs> I, I, I hope just we're, we, we, we love working yeah. with you and we love your work. So yeah. like any, yeah. anytime. <laughs> Likewise, like it's, yeah, like I said, it's, it's, it's really something, um, I guess in these times, like when I'm just looking at everybody, like with this eye of like, who are you? Who are you? What side are you on? <laughs> but to see that you guys, you y'all are, are just uh, incredibly compassionate. You guys sent me a turkey. I'll never forget that. I was <laughs> sick. Y'all sent me a turkey. And that was like, I'll never forget that. Like y'all just have always been, like I said, like family to me. Um, through some of my darkest times, you guys have lifted me out. And so um, I will always be in your gratitude and I'm always excited and, and honored to to do anything, any anything with you guys. You guys gave me my first voice acting credit. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, that's right. Yo, you're I'm, great. Yo, yeah. Jake so, Stonewall. Jake Stonewall. Yeah, Jake. So, you know, whenever Jake gets that solo episode, I <laughs> We can get we'll get you in more. Yeah. So yeah. do you uh do you know uh when your album's coming out yet for it for the actually masses? today it just got oh. cleared by uh, it, was, it took forever because I guess COVID um the sure. album inspectors with the distributor took forever so it's either gonna be this Friday or next Friday um all right cool. hopefully this Friday but if not this Friday then definitely by next Friday this comes uh, out on YouTube out on, on platforms. Friday so it could be out today. <laughs> Yeah, yeah if, you're, if you're watching this on Friday, please yeah. go look. Yeah. So if you guys watch this, if you're if you're watching this, it may be too late. But um, <laughs> no, you'll find it um, by the time this airs. My website will be back up, richiebranson.com. Uh, I'm gonna start streaming on Twitch and shit. So follow my Twitch, Richie Branson. Twitter, Richie Branson. Okay. Everything is Richie Branson. You know? Perfect. That's but, good. That's the way to do it. Uniform. Yes, just uniform, just really easy. <laughs> well, and really uh, easy. even if it, it, you know, if it hasn't come out yet, uh, you were you were cool enough to let us uh, at the end of this episode. We're gonna put on uh, one of the tracks from it. So if it's yes. not out yet, sneak preview is coming up um, right after this episode. But uh, yes, it is. Richie, thank you so much. Seriously, fun. like you, you, you're a joy of a, of a human being. Uh, <laughs> so we're we're just happy to be around you. So please, everybody, go support Richie uh, and prayer thank hands. You for watching another episode of i have notes yes uh, heavy notes but notes nonetheless <laughs> <laughs> well Thank uh you guys we'll so be much. back next week and uh yeah thanks everybody be safe Bye. still gotta tell them i'm not at the top and i'm running my race if you are i'll get the fuck out my face sliding my whip like i got it on skates turbo my shit i don't need a v8 landed in tokyo i'm on the shoot up super look like it just came out of pluto i got a turbo that's built like a sumo foot on the clutch then i kick it like judo Skirt. foot on the gas i got kilometers all on my dash i'm in the rotary straight from japan ripping the momo i'm chasing the bag they tried to tell me